in May 2011, Idris Murphy took a bunch of artists out to Fowler's Gap through Artist Profile magazine and we were out there for 10, 12 days and I made all these little sculptures from stones and twigs and rocks and basically then started drawing them and the paintings you see behind you come from these little sculptures. So it was a way of me connecting with uh, the place that I visited for 20 years but not so much as a teacher as an artist. And a new set of paintings that's coming up at Liverpool Street in December totally comes from this desert stuff. They're, they're made from me just walking, wandering around and picking up stuff that I'm attracted to, you know, kind of intuitively, and that's it's a way I draw too, intuitively, and f binding them together. So there's a kind of little fetish thing or ritualistic thing in there, just things I'm attracted to and tying them together and making a construction rather than trying to deal with the view. It's me making this little structure to do with how I see or think about the desert. I don't know if they'll ever get shown, but they're the starting point. I make drawings from them and then make the paintings from them. So they're a kind of way in to the desert. So the drawings that you've got here, every single one of those drawings is made from me putting the little structures outside in the sun and getting a shadow or drawing the form and the shadow or either or and trying to find some way of not for trying to find some way, just drawing it, not thinking about it too much, drawing it and seeing the forms, basically the simple things to do with form and shape and structure. And some of them, some of them are quite simple, like that's just a stone. But by rubbing it out, it gives it some other quality or you know, it might make you think more about the mass or the weight of it. So the rubbing out and redrawing is a way of me kind of interfering with it. And the way that I draw them lends itself to abstraction. Although I see those as quite real. The drawings are quite real. Now some of them are just straight up shadows too. And some of them are just draw straight drawings of little structures that I've rubbed out or redrawn. And when, when I get excited about the forms, what I'll try and do is use those forms and put them back into the painting. Try. <laughs> try. I'm looking for some transformative thing it's it's like it's um, process driven so the drawings are from real life but I interfere with them by rubbing them out redrawing rubbing them out until something pops up that I'm kind of attracted to that might remind me of the thing but not necessarily look like the thing and there's a, there's a great um, Philip Guston I love Philip Guston's work quote he says the look of something the image of the thing can get in the road of understanding the thing. And I think that's kind of where I am with abstraction, trying to understand the thing without replicating it in a visual way. And then we go from there to here. Yeah. That size, the size I'm using now, 153 by 130, so five by four feet. I nicked it from David Band, a really good painter who passed away this year, that shows it Tim Olsen. And I love, I think he's one of Australia's great underrated painters, although Tim's representing him, which is good. And he, he was always really good with size and scale. So I, I talked to him at his show opening about the size, and I like the scale, it's really good. And I've never used this size. And I'll be painting lots more of those. It's acrylic underpainting on linen and then I put glazes on it so the brown is pretty much a glaze over white acrylic and then sanded back and I, the sanding back is new for me and I like the transformative quality to that and how it lines up nicely with the stone the kind of little objects that I've made. This painting Mirage um, it's kind of an incidental painting I put a horizon line in it just as a formal device, but I think it's a kind of hook because you know, something about the desert horizon is everywhere, that big flat space. The way, the way the pictures are made, it's linen, and then it's got that white acrylic, which I slap down really quickly, you know, um, kind of fluid way on the floor. And once the acrylic dries, I then put a, a glaze over the top. It's, the brown glaze is just 
like a giant bit of watercolour except obviously oil glaze that sits into the surface it actually drops through the linen or sits on the acrylic and the big thing with these ones as I was saying is to actually sand them down because it's got a kind of worn look to it which I really like and then the blue you know, is sampling sky and the black is actually the shadow because the shadows are so deep and rich out there so me playing around with chopping things up and resorting them. I, I, make, I make work to question things, to try and explain things back to me. So when I was painting Mirage, I didn't know it was going to end up with a horizon line and it's just me reacting to it and playing with formal qualities of it and the work starts having a conversation with you and you start talking back to it. And if you're lucky, they work sometimes. Sometimes they don't. I've been visiting the desert for 20 years, but this is probably the first mature work that I've made about my experience of the desert. Um, it'd be interesting to see what the public thinks, because it's different, it's quite different from my last work.